Well, hello, everybody. It's Thursday. Thank you for joining me for today's video devotion. We are in the book of Revelation, chapter 14. So I hope you've got your Bible and your notepad ready to take some notes. Um, today, I just want to walk us through some of these verses and hopefully be a lot shorter than I was uh, yesterday. But um, So let's just go ahead and jump in. Revelation 14, uh, in verses 1, 3, and 4, he says, I, I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, when with him was the 144,000, uh, which we saw earlier in the book of Revelation. And they have his name, Jesus' name, and the Father's name on their forehead. In verse 3, they sing a new song. Um, uh, before the throne, so they're in heaven, okay? So they, they, they sing a new song before the throne, before the living creatures and the elders, and and um, and they're worshiping, worshiping Jesus. And in verse 4, he said, These are the ones who have not been defiled with women, and they kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been purchased from Him from among men as the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And so being the first fruits means they're not the only ones. And we said a few days ago, earlier in Revelation, that the 144,000, I think, refer to the the summation, the total of all the Jewish people who will be believers in Jesus, followers of Jesus, Messianic Jews, if you will. And um, the, uh, the first fruits means that they are that the the rest of the harvest is all of us Gentiles who are followers of Christ, and when he says they have not been defiled with women, that would make sense to a person of Jewish background because in the Old Testament, anyone who worshipped an if a Jewish person or the Jewish nation worshipped an idol, worshipped pagan gods, and so on, uh, they were they were the prophets said they were guilty of fornication. It was like they were cheating on God, like a man cheats on his wife, uh, fornication, adultery. They were guilty of spiritual fornication or adultery if they followed a false god, a pagan religion. Uh, and, I, and so he's saying, here in heaven are these Jewish people who are believers in Jesus, the 144,000, who never did that. They, they, stayed, they are followers of Christ. They stayed true to the gospel. And uh, they didn't compromise with pagan religion. And in John's day, they didn't they didn't compromise by worshiping the Roman emperor either. Um, and, um, and then you go on down in verse eight when he talks about fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Uh, <clears throat> he's talking about Rome is going to end. Rome was not going to last forever, and that will be true of any kingdom. We think throughout history since the Roman Empire, there have been other kingdoms, other powerful nations that have come and gone. And there's no guarantee that if Jesus delays his coming, that America will always be here. Russia or China will always be an empire because kingdoms come and kingdoms go. They will fall. And then in verses 9 through 11, he says, if anyone worships the beast uh, and receives this mark, which is a, you know, uh, just you, you have the, the, the public approval, the government approval that you're going along with the values of the culture. Um, he says they will drink the wine of the wrath of God. And, uh, and, he, and, and he's talking about eternal punishment. And remember, the 144,000 are already at, they're in heaven worshiping. So we've, we've jumped ahead now to the second coming of Christ. Okay, and, and Babylon, all these empires are going to fall, and those who worship and follow the, the philosophies and the values and the false religions of these various governments and powers and, and so on are going to experience the wrath of God. And in verse 10, uh, he says, It'll be mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night, those who worship the beast and his image and who receives the mark of, of his name. And so in other words, everybody who who goes with the philosophy of the world, the, of the nations, the Roman Empire in John's day and since then any other, Rather than Jesus and the gospel, the Lamb are going to have etern they're, they're, they're going to experience the eternal wrath, the eternal judgment of God in hell in the lake of fire. But those of us who are Christians, we persevere. We keep our faith in verse 12 there again. And uh, 
Then he says in verse 13, those of us who were martyred for the faith, who died for the faith, or who, who, who have died for whatever reason, but we had a relationship with Jesus, we're blessed. We're blessed because we cease from our labors and our deeds follow us. Our faith and our life with Jesus here on earth uh, will follow us into heaven. And then he, he, he describes how the second coming happens and the judgment happens. In verse 14, there's a, a white cloud and, and one like the Son of Man, a Son of Man. So it's Jesus is sitting on the white cloud, has his crown in a sharp sickle. And the angel, now notice in verse 15, the angel comes out of the temple and, uh, and, and tells Jesus to put your sickle down to the earth and reap because the hour has come. The harvest is ripe. And uh, Jesus talked about the second coming being God, uh, Jesus coming back and, 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 and gathering the harvest together. And then it, the chapter ends with uh, another angel coming out of the temple and, uh, and, and, and telling the, another angel to put his sharp sickle in and gather the clusters from the vine. And those grapes are gathered and and they are thrown into a wine press of the wrath of God at the end of verse 19. And the wine press was trodden outside the city and the blood came out from the wine press up to the horse's bridles for a distance of 200 miles. What he's saying here is, and, and this is really important, the angel that said it's time to put the sickle in and gather the harvest, the people of God, that, that it's time to put the sickle in and gather the grapes of wrath and, and the people who are lost, who, who worship the beast and the worldly philosophies instead of the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and they experience the wrath of God, comes out of the temple. Remember Jesus said, the only person who knows the hour, the day, the moment, the time of the second coming is God the Father. Jesus said he himself did not know when that day was. Only God the Father. And out of the temple comes an angel with a message from the Father saying to the Son, it's time to put your sickle in. That's how the end is going to happen. And God, and that sickle will, will, will swing and it will gather the people of God, the harvest. And the sickle will, uh, will swing and it will gather those who are not the people of God. And they will be trampled in a wine press. And like the grape juice runs when wine was, was pressed, the blood will, will run because God's wrath will be poured out on the lost at the second coming of Jesus. So we are gathered and they are judged. We experience rest and they experience the wrath of God. That's how the second pl- second coming of Jesus will, will take place. And that's the message of this chapter. Earthly kingdoms will end. The lost will experience eternal wrath, but Jesus' followers are to keep the faith and they will find rest from everything in the bosom of the Father. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.